Well, good morning. Welcome to another video. Today I've come out to a beautiful forest. Um, it's a forest I know quite well. I grew up near here. It's a beautiful mix of plantation woodland where there's just straight rows of trees for as long as you can see. Uh, really thick, dense, deciduous forest that looks really old and ancient that there's no way you could walk through. Uh, and then a bit of farmland as well with animals that you can see grazing on it. It's a beautiful mix of all sorts of different things to see and take pictures of. And what I thought I'd do today is mainly I've come out to practice talking to the camera because that's something I found really difficult so far with these videos. It's just trying to come across as natural, trying to treat the camera like a person. And I find that quite difficult as a lot of YouTubers do. So I'm trying to develop that skill a little bit more. And the other reason is that I can use this lens, the Canon EF 50mm f1.8, otherwise known as the Nifty 50, a really popular lens. Most people's first lens that they buy after their kit lens. That was true in my case. I bought this, this particular one uh, was my first one that I bought. Um, and I'm out here today to try and use it in a bit of woodland photography and see if, it, if it, you can really use it for landscape photography, woodland photography, because for most people, it is going to be the first one they buy because they're usually just so affordable, so crisp and sharp. Um, so let's see if we can use it today. out on days like this without a plan or anything specific in mind it's really hard work but it's much more fun and relaxing quite often when you come out you want to get something specific if you don't get it you end up feeling a bit of a failure but when you come out just to have a nice day test out a lens try and find some pictures it's such a much nicer experience I'm sure you'd agree if you've done it before that just getting out with your camera in the outdoors is what you do it for really if you get some nice pictures great if you don't it's still a good experience anyway i've just spotted quite a nice scene here that demonstrates the capabilities of the uh, nifty 50 quite well there's a beautiful scene of like a row of trees in front of me and the good thing about a prime lens is when you're locked to a certain focal length it means that you really have to use your brain to see compositions you really have to think about them uh, it's recommended as a way of really improving your photography by challenging yourself to just use one focal length. I've used it before as a way of improving my photography. It's something that's been suggested by a lot of photographers before. And what we can see here is a really nice pattern in the trees. Because it's a plantation forest, they're all spaced evenly. And when the side light of the sun hits them, it gives this really lovely glow, especially on the green that's growing up the side of the moss. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to open up the aperture to really make that separation. But that's the other good thing about it, which I'll come on to in a minute. Okay, so it's not the most interesting photo in the world, but it was my first of the day, so give me some slack. What this photo does do is show how sharp this lens is. Check out where the branches meet the sky. Lenses don't often perform their best at the extreme ends of their capabilities, so considering the aperture was wide open for this one, i.e. f1.8, it's still super sharp. A useful thing for any photographer. Now one of the hardest things about woodland photography is creating separation between your subjects. Because there's so many rows of trees, things can very easily get blended together. Now that's where a wide aperture on a lens comes in really handy. And what's really good about this Nifty 50 is because it's f1.8, that means you can really open up that aperture and create a lovely shallow depth of field between your subject and the trees behind. Now I've just spotted here two trees that have twisted around each other as they've grown up. A really nice subject, but it blends into all these other trees all around me so easily. But because I've got f1.8 on here, 
I can open that aperture up, really separate that tree from the others, and hopefully come out with a really nice image that makes that tree really stand out. So let's give it a go and see if it actually works. This image really shows the usefulness of that nice wide f1.8 aperture. You can see that the subject I want to highlight is really sharp, whilst those trees in the background that it would easily blend into are really soft and subdued. It's an incredibly useful tool for woodland photography. Now another handy use of the Nifty 50 is when you want to try and add some interest to a, what is a pretty boring scene. I'm stood here by what is a, a really pleasant lake but there's nothing interesting to picture. But if I add a little something, namely a person, myself the only person here, then I can create a nice separation using the wide aperture, stop down to f1.8 and what that means is that I can stand on the edge of this lake make a nice scene of someone looking out over the lake, create interest in a picture that otherwise would be really quite boring. just had a little snow flurry so I thought it'd be a good opportunity just to pull over and have a little coffee maybe a bite to eat as well it's been really nice so far just getting out in the forest and walking I haven't seen anybody in about two hours since I left the car park there's uh, no better feeling than just that bit of solitude you get in a forest nice and quiet no road noise away from everything it's one of the best things about photography Thought it'd be a good little chance as well just to practice chatting to the camera because that's something I really need to develop. I always feel like I have to talk about something that adds value all the time, which I try to do. I, you know, I want to give my viewers what they came for, uh, something to learn, maybe a bit of an adventure, something like that. But just chatting to the camera as well. Some people just seem to have a knack for it. They can waffle on for ages and it seems interesting. I'm not very good at that, uh, just making up story or something that seems interesting. So as I could talk a little bit about my week, it's been a, an absolutely insane week, culminating in like a 12 hour day yesterday with work. So I was so glad to be able to just get out this morning. I was going to get up for the sunrise, but <sighs> there was no chance. <laughs> I was just too tired. I was uh, glad that there wasn't a really good sunrise this morning. I did, I did wake up in time to see it, but there was nothing really. So I was happy about that. Just nice to be able to get out a little bit later this morning come to the forest at a decent time, have a little walk around, get some nice pictures, talk about the lens, maybe share a few tips with you guys and see what you think. If you've got any ideas about stuff I could just chat to the camera about, uh, a little bit about myself and that sort of thing, then just let me know in the comments because, you know, that's the sort of thing I want to develop a sort of a community feel. I don't want to just be a teacher, although that's something that uh, people say I'm quite good at is teaching things in life I mean not on YouTube I'm still practicing that but you know teaching something I've done for quite a while I'm really enjoying making these videos so far it's been a really good experience I feel like it's built up a lot of my own self-confidence if nothing else just being able to come out and talk to a camera in front of people is really quite difficult uh, it's really helped me no end in my day-to-day -day life to develop a bit more confidence and just being able to come out and do something I love a bit more as well. It gives me a good reason to go out and do the photography, especially if I can just chat to people about it. You know, I feel that it really helps me to 
have a good reason to go and do it. Well, that's finished now. Let's go and take some more pictures and see what else we can learn about the 50mm lens. A mistake that I often see happen with prime lenses is that people tend to use them only for their wide apertures. This one for example opens up to f1.8. Now you might think that you'd only ever need to use it for that but one of the really good things about prime lenses is that they're so affordable and they tend to be very sharp which means that if you have a long distance scene like this one behind me here then if you stop down to maybe say f11 then you'll probably get a really sharp crisp clean image. This one behind me shows just how vast this forest goes for miles and miles. Now I could I could open up to f1.8, get a shallow depth of field, but then I'd miss out on the trees in the background showing how far into the distance it goes. Whereas because I can stop down to f11, I get a good crisp, clean image. such a versatile lens I really do recommend you get one you can use it for all sorts thank you so much for watching today's video I really appreciate everyone who watches these videos as I've said before it really does make a huge difference for you just watching so thank you so much if you've enjoyed the video I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a like and if you do want to subscribe and see some more of uh, my uh, photography uh, follow me along maybe learn a few things as you come along the way then you'd be more than welcome to join us we'd be happy to have you if you want to see me using a different lens then watch this video here uh, that's where I use a, a long lens uh, in a mountain that, that's a video that I really enjoyed making that one it really shows the usefulness of a, a long lens for mountain photography and if you do want to subscribe click on my face here and I'll see you on the next one